हेलो एवरी वन टूडे आई विल डिस्कस अबाउट द ऑर्गन्स एंड टिश्यूज ऑफ इम्यून सिस्टम सो विदाउट एनी डिले लेट स्टार्ट दी वीडियो सो टाइप्स ऑफ लिम्फोइड ऑर्गन्स एंड टिश्यूज सो जनरली द लिम्फोइड ऑर्गन्स दीज आर डिवाइडेड इंटू टू कैटेगरीज फर्स्ट इज द प्राइमरी लिम्फोइड ऑर्गन एंड सेकेंड इज द सेकेंडरी लिम्फोइड ऑर्गन द प्राइमरी लिम्फोइड ऑर्गन्स आर दोज ऑर्गन्स वेयर the immature lymphocytes they mature means the organs in which maturation of the lymphocytes has been takes place so that organs are known as primary lymphoid organs so example of the primary lymphoid organs are thymus and bone marrow now the secondary lymphoid organs so these are those organs in which these mature lymphocytes they encounter the antigen and ultimately bind that antigen and trigger their differentiation into the fully active effector cells so in the primary lymphoid organ these lymphocytes they mature while in the secondary lymphoid organ these mature lymphocytes they encounter and bind with the antigen so the secondary lymphoid organs they include spleen lymph nodes and mucosal associated tissues so now discuss all these in detail first the primary lymphoid organ so the first is thymus so this thymus it is located in the upper front part of our chest and it is made up of the two lobes which consist the each lobe it consists of a central medulla and an outer cortex which is ultimately surrounded by the capsule so the precursor t cells from the bone marrow they migrate into the outer cortex of this thymus where they proliferate and as they mature so about 98% of them die this is due to the process known as thymic selection so in which the t cells that recognize the self cells they are destroyed means during thymic selection the t cells which recognize the self cells or they, that recognize the self body cells as antigen so they get degraded so this is known as the thymic selection which is ultimately done in the thymus while the remaining 2% of the cells then now finally move to the medulla of this thymus where they ultimately mature and subsequently they enter into the blood stream these t cells now recognize and respond to the variety of foreign known host or known self substances so in the thymus the t lymphocytes matures second second the primary lymphoid organ is bone marrow so it is a semi solid spongy tissue which is found inside the long bones and it contain the stem cells the stem cells it can be developed into red blood cells white blood cells and platelets so b cells that is b lymphocyte it mature in the bone marrow and this is the structure of bone marrow that it is formed of the yellow bone marrow and red bone marrow it is a, you can say it is a spongy spongy type of tissue which is present in the long bones like femur now the secondary lymphoid organs so the second lymphoid organ they include first spleen so spleen is the you can say it is most highly organized secondary lymphoid organ it is a large organ which is located in the abdominal cavity which function to filter the blood and also trap the blood borne particles to assessed for the foreignness by phagocytes and this spleen it is surrounded by the capsule and there are the two types of compartment in the spleen which are named as red pulp and the white pulp the red pulp of spleen it consists of network of sinusoids these sinusoids are huge macrophages and erythrocytes and this is the zone with t lymphocytes while once the pathogen trapped in this splenic macrophages or dendritic cell it is phagocytosed killed and digested the resulting antigen that are presented to lymphocytes and activate a specific immune response so this spleen act as the secondary lymphoid organ next is the lymph nodes so lymph nodes they are present throughout the body they generally lie at the junction of lymphatic vessels where the macrophages and dendritic cells they entrap the antigens which enter the lymphatic system they are kidney or oval in shape so this is the structure of this particular lymph node as you see each lymph node it is surrounded by the fibrous capsule which extend inside a lymph node to form a trabeculae 
the substance of lymph node is divided into outer cortex and inner molar inner medulla the helium is and the indent on the concave surface of lymph node where the lymphatic vessels live and the blood vessel enter and the leave next are the lymphoid tissues so lymphoid tissues they are also found throughout the body some lymphoid tissue they are closely associated with some specific tissue like skin and mucous membranes so skin associated lymphoid tissues so these are the lymphoid tissue which are closely related with the skin so that's why called as skin associated lymphoid tissues so when the pathogenic microorganism they enter into the tissue under the skin surface so they encounter a special kind of cells which are called the skin associated lymphoid tissues that is salt the main function of this salt is just to you can say confine the microbial antigens to the area immediately underlying the epidermis and to prevent them from enter into the blood stream means this salt they just entrap the antigens and prevent their entry into the blood one type of this salt is langerhans cells which is a dendritic cell that phagocytose the microorganism which penetrate our skin once the langerhans cell it internalizes that foreign particle or microorganism so now it migrate to epidermis to near lymph node where it present this antigen to activate the nearby lymphocytes which ultimately induce the immune response so these salts they are also related with or involved in the immune response second are the mucosal associated lymphoid tissue so these are the specialized lymphoid tissue which are in connection with mucous membranes so that's why called as mucosal associated lymphoid tissue or malt so there are several types of malt like first gut associated lymphoid tissue galt so this mucosal tissue they are present in the gut so that's why called as gut associated lymphoid tissue they generally include tonsils adenoids diffuse lymphoid area along the gut and specialized region in the intestine which are called pears patches so all these are the gut that is gut associated lymphoid tissue similarly bronchial associated lymphoid tissue that is balt so these are the mucosal tissues which are associated or which are present in the respiratory system so that's why called as a bronchial associated lymphoid tissues so this was all about the organs of this immune system which include the primary and secondary lymphoid organ and in case of tissues which also include this primary and secondary lymphoid tissue so that's all for today guys see you in the next video thank you very much